Welcome to Survival Crash Course. This is Omega Agent 661, and today we're jumping into multi tool ring and putting the Gerber Truss and Leatherman Signal in a no holds barred rumble to determine which is the better multi tool. Let's get to it. In this corner, we have the Challenger, weighing in at a sturdy 8.4 ounces, hailing from well respected brand Gerber, but made in China, and boasting 17 total tools is the Gerber Truss. The Gerber Truss is accompanied to the ring with a tough nylon sheath that can be attached by belt loop vertically and horizontally and is molly compatible. It comes into this match strong and ready to compete with two locking blades, a single edge blade and a partially serrated edge blade and spring loaded pliers. Will that be enough to knock the champion off his DIY throne though? And in this corner we have the champion weighing in at a slim 7.46 ounces boasting 19 total tools hailing from the name of the multi-tool game Leatherman and made proudly in the United States of America is the Leatherman Signal. The Leatherman Signal is company to the ring with a tough nylon sheath that can be attached via belt loop. Coming into this matchup, the Leatherman Signal boasts a full-size 420HC partially serrated DLC coated locking blade, replaceable carbide cutters, and some fancy moves in the form of a removable diamond sharpener and combination fire starter slash emergency whistle. Is this all razzle dazzle or did the champion come to fight? Well, it's time to find out. But first, GoPro quick video.
Now let's get back into the matchup. Round one, knife test comparison. In round one, we focus on the cutting abilities of the knives included with these multi-tools. The Gerber Trust features a drop point blade with a slight recurve and a second partially serrated blade also with the drop point. The blades were on the small size measuring around two and a quarter inches give or take and the width of the tool made it difficult to wield. The straight edge blade was sharp enough on the factory to complete most of the cutting tasks but the straight edge on the partially serrated blade was incredibly dual. Good thing that the serrations on this blade took up most of the knife edge. I admit it's nice to have the option of the straight blade or a partially serrated blade even if I was confused on which side of the tool it was on most of the time. The grip was uncomfortable as the truss widened significantly closer to the blade and felt awkward in the hand. You can use a blade for generic kitchen tasks, but the short length of the blade drew criticism. In the piercing slashing test, the shape of the blade led to better piercing than the signal though. The Leatherman signal features a worn cliff blade with a flat black Cerakote finish. The knife is surprisingly large, measuring around 3 inches long and came extremely sharp from the factory. Unfortunately, the knife is also partially serrated and only gives you about one and a half inches, give or take, of straight edge to slice with. It wasn't an issue until I started trying to feather stick a branch or when I tried to whittle a point out of the branch. The serrations made it difficult to keep momentum and rhythm going. On the other hand, the straight edge portion of the blade excelled at all other cutting tasks. It was much easier to use due to the narrow profile of the signal. It almost feels like a regular knife in the hand and was easier to perform generic kitchen tasks as well. The worn clip blade is also really great at opening packages and slicing through plastic clamshell products with ease. It performed well on the piercing slashing test, but the worn clip shape is not the best for piercing and the serrations would get hooked up every now and then causing me to stumble while I was piercing. In the end though, the larger and sharper blade that was easier to use was the winner. This round goes to the Leatherman Signal. Round two, tool test comparison. In this round, I try to perform some common DIY tasks that you would encounter at home or at the campsite. This means that not all included tools were used, so keep that in mind. My apologies for all you all fans. I know we're going to be disappointed that I didn't get to use the all. Before we get into it though, let's talk about locking mechanisms. Most of the major tools and all of the knives lock into place on both multi-tools, but the Gerber Trust uses spring-assisted mechanisms that are actuated on the sides of the multi-tool, while the Leatherman Signal has an assortment of locking mechanisms. The knife and saw blade on the Signal use a liner lock style locking mechanism, but most of the tools use more of a button style lock. The button lock was well designed and I was naturally inclined to place pressure on a spot of that button that would only reinforce the strength of the lock and it really increased my confidence in applying real force to the tools. Despite the differences between the locking systems, I didn't notice any disadvantages to either one. The side lock system on the truss might be safer when closing the knife as your fingers aren't in the knife path, um, but it's not a biggie. Both multi-tools perform well in this test, but I do have some thoughts and comments, so let's start out with the plier test. I tested the pliers by pounding a nail on a wooden board and using the pliers to, well, pry it out. The spring-loaded pliers on the truss made it easier to wield than the pliers on the signal, but both pliers handled the nail easily. The Leatherman signal gets bonus points for the black circle finish on the pliers. I'm a sucker for those premium details. Now the wire cutter test. I tested the cutters on flexible gardening wire and automotive wire. Again, both pliers worked well, but I love the signal's replaceable wire cutters. They perform better overall, and if I ever bite into something I shouldn't have and damage them, I'll be able to easily replace them. If I chip out the wire cutters on the truss, I'd have to send the whole thing in for replacement. And hope Gerber doesn't ask too many questions on how they were damaged. Now let's move on to the screwdriver test. Speaking of replaceability, I really like the screwdriver system on the signal. Both multi-tools have locking screwdriver systems, but instead of dedicated bits for the Phillips or flathead screwdrivers that most multi-tools have, the Signal has a nifty replaceable two-sided driver. I'm hoping I'll be able to find multiple bit styles that will fit the Leatherman driver and tailor it to what I use the most. Unfortunately, you're gonna, going to have to open the Signal if you want to use a screwdriver. Going back to the Gerber Trust, it has a dedicated Phillips and flathead drivers that are accessible when the tool is closed, which is awesome. 
Being able to access them while the tool is closed is a great feature and I found the screwdrivers on the truss easier to use on the signal, which was especially clumsy to use when I attempted to close the pliers and use them. The longer length bits on the Gerber truss also made it much easier to use. My only worry is breaking the Gerber drivers. I broke a few tools on a similar Gerber Bear Grylls multi-tool, including the Phillips bit, and had to return the entire multi-tool. As far as screwdrivers go, I decided they both had equal pros and cons and declared this a draw. Next up is the saw test. The saw on the Gerber truss is around 2 inches long and is noticeably thicker than the saw on the signal. It exhibited less flex in the signal as I sawed into a small branch, but the unwieldy ergonomics of the truss reared its head again as I was extremely uncomfortable to hold as I sawed into the branch. On the plus size, I did like the knife like cutout to assist in opening the saw and the fact that, like all the tools on the truss, I was able to access the saw without opening it up. The saw on the Leatherman Signal is also around 3 inches long and unexpectedly thin. The saw is also DLC coated with the same flat black circle finish as on the knife which I find very snazzy. The signal doesn't have an obvious cutout or peg to assist in opening it which I found bizarre at first. But if you look closely you'll notice the saw tip has a traditional multi-tool fingernail wedge I guess you call it that you use to open the saw. It's very discreet and I prefer the Gerber Truss's larger knife like cutout. Before I tested the saw on the signal, I expected to not like the thinner saw blade, but it easily bit into the branch making short work of it. The signal thinner frame again was much easier to wield than the truss. I'm not a saw expert, this is a saw survival crash course remember, but is a thinner saw blade actually preferred for sawing? I, I really don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you do know. In the end both saws performed well but the signal was easier to use and saw through the branch quicker. And I just love the DLC finish. So I give the edge in this category to the Leatherman. On to the can opener test. I opened a small tuna can and a regular sized can of corn using only the included can openers. The Gerber Trust combines the bottle opener and can opener on one tool while the Leatherman Signal uses a dedicated can opener and includes the bottle opener on the carabiner clip. Weirdly, the tool chart on Leatherman's website says it's on the can opener but whatever um it didn't seem like it to me i couldn't figure that out anyway the gerber stays consistent keeping this tool accessible without having to open up the entire plier and uses the same style fingernail wedge to pull it up the leatherman must be open to access a bottle opener and instead of the fingernail wedge we'll get a knife like fingernail groove to pull the tool out with both multi-tools, I struggled to get into the groove required to open cans quickly, but it was apparent after using the different can openers back to back that the signal was just superior. It was sharper and pierced easily into the can. Um, the grip was weird as I had to use it semi-open due to the fact that the signal has a carabiner clip slash hammer and it doesn't let the tool close shut completely. Um, but the grip on the truss though, that continued to be a huge problem. and actually started to hurt my hands while I used it. In the end, both tools did the job, but the signal did it easier, faster, and pain-free, and for that, the signal runs away with this test. Now, the bottle opener test. So, uh, I basically perform this test very often, as uh, my preferred beer choice are Mexican-style Mexican beers like uh, Corona Modelo, and Daddy likes to have him some brew. So, you know, both bottle openers were definitely used and used often. As I mentioned earlier, the Gerbil doubles up the bottle opener with the can opener. It gets points for being able to access the tool without opening it up, but it was sometimes difficult to find quickly, especially when the sun begins to set and you start getting a good buzz on. You know, it's hard to find. The Gerber's tool also tended to slide around a bit on the beer caps as well, and it got worse the more you drank. The Leatherman's bottle opener is integrated on the carabiner clip and after some initial confusion on how to work it, it works really well and is convenient. No need to open the tool or look for which side the tool is on and then try to locate the wedge or fingernail cutout to, you know, withdraw it. You just whip it out and use. Easy peasy, name is squeezy. This round goes to the signal as well. Round three, special features comparison. This round covers special features and includes useful tools that are 
not usually included in multi-tools such as the scissors included on the Gerber truss. Let's start with the Leatherman Signal. The gimmick with this multi-tool is that it's designed for an active outdoor hiking slash camping lifestyle and as such it comes with special features designed for all you outdoorsy types. That's the idea anyway. To fulfill the premise of this gimmick, the Signal has a built-in carabiner clip that can easily clip your backpack for quick storage, a removable diamond sharpener, and a removable emergency whistle slash fire rod combo. The carabiner clip is nice and has some built-in functions like the bottle opener we talked about before, and I love it. But the other special features aren't that special if you ask me. Now trust me, I know multi-tools are not meant to be your primary tool and are mainly bandaged to use until you can get to your real tool. But the removable extras and the Leatherman signal just felt cheap. For an expensive Leatherman, you don't want a whistle that feels like it's going to split in two as you strike a fire. Using the saw to strike the fire rod did produce good sparks, but the fire rod is so small I doubt it will last very long. The knife sharpener will work in a pinch, but it's also very small. It would take some time to hone any knife bigger than the included partially serrated knife. The hammering pommel on the signal works well enough, and I would love to have these features, you know, if the multi-tool was all I had on me. Um, but I'm going to stick with bringing real tools with me on my excursions, like my work sharp food sharpener and exotech fire rod. Not to mention my emergency supply of strike anywhere matches and the zippo lighter in my bag. So... I wasn't wowed by the somewhat gimmicky special features the Signal had to offer, which is a shame because those were really what got me interested in this tool to begin with. In the end though, it was the non-gimmicky stuff that really impressed. In fact, one of the best features in my opinion is the knife clip. It makes carrying the Signal around easy. It even has a better pocket presence than my Microtech SOCOM Elite, which really, you know, chews up pockets and it takes up a lot of space in my in my uh, pocket. The signal can even attach itself well to Molly systems with that knife clip. You know, in the end, the knife clip has made the signal an EDC knife for me. I'm also inclined to consider the 420 HC blade still a nice special feature as well, even if it's not a higher end like premium super still. The Gerber Trust never tells you what type of steel the knife blades are, which to me is a tail unto itself. Oh, and uh, let's not forget that DLC Cerakote finish on the signal. So tactical, so sexy. I love it so much. The Gerber Trust, on the other hand, has a more straightforward utility slash construction theme and looks the part. A great feature is that all the locking tools are accessible while it is, while it is closed, which is a great time saver. The spring-loaded pliers are a good feature that doesn't feel cheap and makes the pliers easier to use. The included scissors are a great addition and are especially useful when fishing and performing small cutting tasks. I really wish the Signal had similar scissors. Those come in so handy all the time and really could have given the truss the knockout punch I was looking for. Rounding out the special features on the truss is a linear hole. Overall, I give the edge and special features to the Signal not for the fire rod or sharpener, but for the features on the tools that matter the most to me. Round four, value comparison. Now, this is where things get tricky. I have tried to avoid going over the cost between these two multi-tools and for good reason. The signal is more than double the cost of the truss. I know you might be thinking this comparison is just not fair since the price difference is so great, but if you look at the dimensions and style of the multi-tools, you can see their similarities. Both multi-tools are not full-size heavy-duty tools and are more meant to be more like an EDC carry than most multi-tool pliers. Gerber even advertises its low-profile multi-position sheath to help sell that EDC vibe. The Gerber Trust can be had for around that 30 to 40 price range at Blade HQ and Amazon, while the Leatherman Signal will cost you around 120 bucks. So, for the price, the Gerber Trust is a good multi-tool with some good features and a lifetime warranty. It's not made in America, the knife still is suspect, and aside from the scissors, the Trust just left me wanting more. 
Do the special features justify the price of the Leatherman Signal though? Well, first thing first, it's made in the USA. I'm happy to pay a premium on products made in the USA. That is, when I can afford to. I'm not rich. Uh, I'll probably say that every time I do one of these uh, videos. I'm just not rich and sometimes I have to buy the best there is at my price range. I know it's buying into a system that profits corporations and hurts individuals that work in harsh conditions and poverty wages in other countries, but it's a system we're in. At least when I'm buying products made in the USA, I'm supporting hard workers that get paid a minimum wage at least, have health care, and you know, hopefully things like paid time off, vacation time, things like that. So there's that. Aside from that, this product has premium materials. The Cerakote finish is just so cool. The 420HC is not the best knife steel out there, but not many multi-tools boast about the knife steel for good reason. You know, Bucks have been using 420HC for years and you know, it's a perfectly fine uh, knife steel. Now, the Leatherman doesn't have a lifetime warranty, but its 25 year warranty is nothing to sneeze at and the replaceability of some tools make it very desirable. I've utilized Gerber's warranty a few times in the past. Once for that Bear Grylls uh, Survival Multi-Tool I mentioned earlier and for Bear Grylls Pro Survival Knife. And they are a great company that makes it easy to replace products. But I'm kind of wishing I didn't have to return any product. In the case of my Bear Grylls Multi-Tool, I wasn't able to get a direct replacement that really bummed me out. As this is my first Leatherman, Time will tell how durable this is, but so far it seems to live up to the Leatherman name. I do have a complaint about the Leatherman though. My multi-tool arrived dirty. It was a bit greasy, and that cool blue paint, it rubs onto the Cerakote. Um, but I don't mind it too much. I do enjoy the look of a well-used tool that has been put to work. I use the things I buy. I can't afford to buy stuff and just look at them. And I don't mind a tool that you know looks well used. I just kind of wish it didn't look so used and dirty when I first got it. In the end, both tools are a good value, but the price and lifetime warranty of the Gerber slightly edges out the Leatherman in value. Let's go to the scorecards. So both multi tools perform well, and they both have their fair share of pros and cons. But this matchup between middleweight multi-tool contenders demands a winner to be crowned. And crowned it shall be. So let's take a look at its knife review score. For those of you new to my channel, my knife review score is a system I created that helps me put a little bit of like ranking to my tools. And they go over various things such as um, knife material, handle materials, build quality, things like that. It's not an exact science and a lot of it is, you know, based on, you know, objective things. Um, so take it, take this score with a grain of salt, but uh, it's something I use and I try to stay consistent with it. I'm not always 100% consistent. I might later on go back and review a score and update it in my log, but not update it in a video. So, but um, it's something that I like to use and, and something I do often. So let's jump into it first with the Gerber Trust. The Gerber Trust never tells you what steel material it is. I mean, that's really fishy. Is it Twinkie steel? Is it 8 scr 13 MOV? Is it AUS series? What is it? I don't know. It was really, really, really dual on the partially serrated blade, which was a bummer. Um, but the straight edge, straight edge was pretty sharp and it pierced well and everything. Um, it seems to have held up an edge okay. But in the end, I don't know too much about it. So I gave that a, a one, one point only out of, out of 10. Um, the handle scales, I gave it a three. It's nothing special about it, nothing fancy. It's it's still, it, I don't know what kind. It's heavy, it, it has an okay um, feel to it. They're not really comfortable at all in the close position when you gotta use a saw or the knife. So that really hurt its score. Uh, the value, the value, I put it on the high side, I gave it 8 for value. I mean, it's a very affordable multi-tool. It has a lot of good features and tools you're going to use, and it comes with a lifetime warranty. So, I mean, even though it does have mystery still, it, you know, 
lifetime warranty at this price range with all the functions, it's going to get high marks for value. So centering, build quality, things like that. Um, it seems fine. I give it one point. No bonus points for any coding, paint, hard, special hardware, nothing like that. Um, performance overall out of 10, I gave it five. Um, I'm not going to go into the individual slicing, chopping, piercing, slashing, um, but overall it performed, you know, okay. It was fine. It's pocket presence, you know, it's bulky. I want to carry it around in my pocket. It does have a nice low price, low profile sheath that I do like. I like that you're able to attach it via molly or horizontally, vertically. Um, I don't like that it's Velcro, but other than that, it seems fine. And then my last category is extra points based on subjective, like style, design, uh, special features. And I gave it two. So in the end, that night scored a grand total of 32 out of 75. Now let's dive into the night re review score of the Leatherman Signal. Starting off with the blade steel, it's 420 HC, which really it isn't anything really special it's not a premium or super steel definitely not a super steel uh, but buck knife been using it a lot of good reputable knife companies have been using it for a long time and it was really sharp it had a cool shape to it it did all the tasks easily so i gave it a three out of ten the the knife still hurts the score but it was sharp i didn't have any issues with it time will tell how how the edge holds up the handles or scales, I gave that a 3 out of 10. It's a slimmer profile, easier to hold than the truss. Uh, I like the color of the paint, but I mean, it's still just like a metal frame. It doesn't have any special kind of grippy texture or anything like that. So I, it wasn't going to score too high on that. So I gave it 3 the same score as the truss. As far as value go, it was a little tricky for me to place the value because it was expensive, around the $100, $120 price range. But I mean, it's a Leatherman. It's made in the USA. It has a 25 year warranty and it feels sturdy. So I gave it a seven out of 10. I I think um, I got my money's worth on it, to be honest. The centering and build quality, uh, I gave it one point. It seems well made. Uh, I gave it the extra point that the trust didn't get for the diamond like coating that it had, the Cerakote. I love that. I really do. It looks awesome. It just it's fancy i love it you're gonna pay extra money you want to get those extra features and i was happy with it no extra points for hardware it doesn't have like titanium screws or hollow point pants or anything like that um but going on to performance i gave it seven out of ten it did all the the tasks that i wanted wanted it to do and did so easily and it was easy to hold so overall i gave it seven out of ten out of performance i'm not going to get into the individual slicing chopping piercing slashing scores but it did really well um, and one category, if ranked high end, you can get um, up to five points as uh, pocket presence or sheath. This thing, if you want to put it in your pocket, you can. I, you know, I've had it in my pocket. It fits fine. I love the knife clip. I love that it has a carabiner. I could clip it to my belt loop real easily. And it comes with the heavy duty sheath with a nice uh, clip to clip it together. No Velcro. Um, wish it had a Molly compatible option. Or maybe an option to hold hold it, you know, horizontally instead of just only vertically. But still, really nice. And as far as extra points, you know, based on subjective style and features, I gave it three extra points. The extra stuff is kind of, you know, chintzy and cheap feeling. The whistle and the fire rod. I mean, it, it did do good sparks. I love the color of it. I love the design. And I really love that black circle. So I gave it three extra points. So in the end, the Leatherman Signal scores a 39 out of 75. And defeats the Leatherman Truss in this Comparo. The Gerber Truss is a fine multi-tool with some good features at a great price. But in the end, it just didn't perform as well as the Leatherman Signal. And its knife review score was impacted by its lack of premium materials and finishes. The truss's performance was also greatly hampered by the shape of the handles in the closed position. The tapered handles are great when you're using the plier portion of the multi-tool. You know, it starts out narrow, widens out towards the end. But I use the knife tools much more often. And that shape was just too wide for me in the closed position. 
if all you had was 40 bucks to drop on a multi-tool, the Trust is a great option with the lifetime warranty that will do the job. But if you can afford to spend more, I would highly recommend the Leatherman Signal. Its overall build quality, premium features, and 25-year warranty are fantastic seller points and justify the higher price tag in my opinion. Not to mention it's made in the USA. The Signal hasn't left my pocket since I purchased it and I fully expect it to perform great for a long time. That's it for this week's episode of Survival Crash Course. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, this is Omega Agent 661 signing out.